What's up everyone, Scott here from Chernobyl Studios and today we are going to talk about metal MIDI drum programming. How to get your drum sounding more realistic, especially your cymbals, as well as common mistakes to avoid that I'm going to show you and explain. Before we go any further, I want to mention down in the description box below, there is a download link for the exact MIDI file that we're going to look at here today. It's totally free, you can download it for free, as well as going to be a PDF file about two pages talking about some more tips and tricks and little guidelines that you can follow for drum programming. Again, link down below, you can download it now, follow along with the video, or go ahead and watch the video and then download it. Up to you, either way, we're gonna get started. The very first tip is, I admit, not exactly drum programming related in terms of actually clicking, but you should have a drum map of some sort, especially if you are new to drum programming. It's gonna help you program faster so that you're not like searching through the piano roll to figure out where all the notes are. And in the case, for example, Reaper 5, we're gonna be using Perfect Drums 1.5. So what you could do, for example, is open up Google Chrome and then go to the stash right here and then you know type in Perfect Drums, which I've already done. And then here we go. We actually have a Perfect Drums 1.5 drum map already created for us. Download that, install it in the default directory, which I'll show you in a second. And let's just go ahead and actually go through this process so you could see how it would look. Look. So we would insert perfect drums. All right, we have perfect drums inserted. Let's just make a MIDI item really quick. Open that MIDI item. So this is what it's gonna look like when you open it for the first time. It, it functions. So kick C2, snare. I mean, I know this just from many years of programming, but you know, you need a drum map. So how would you do that? You would come up here to file to the default media, default menu if you have the RIA menu set installed. Then you go to note CC names and then load note CC names. And then you would go to choose file. The default location is right here. This is your default location. And this is something that you probably want to just go ahead and do because it's gonna open up automatically anyway. Just paste your drum maps in here. You would click Perfect Drums, click on Open, and then here we are. Now this is a little bit of an upgrade, but it's still kind of hard to read. Like, you know, the, what is this Crash 3 left? So what you wanna do is you wanna switch from Piano Roll Mode to uh, Drum Map Mode, like that. There you go, all easy peasy. You can even create, uh, you know, a load, uh, a custom action that goes right to the folder so you can load whatever you want. These are all uh, custom actions too that you can create and set up. It's for a different video, but anyway, that's how you would do it, for example, in Reaper 5. We don't need this, so we're just gonna hit and delete it. So that's tip one. Tip two, obviously, is you need to do intense velocity editing. Now, I could just be like, yeah, do velocity editing, meh, and that's it actually show you what I'm talking about. There's a bunch of key examples that I want to show you. Like I mentioned, this exact MIDI file that we're looking at right now, it's a free download description below. Go ahead and go grab it. So we're going to look at a couple of different cases where velocity editing will take your drums from sounding like obvious machine gun material to a humanistic uh, performance. So let's start with the first example, uh, kick drum rolls. So sounds sounds like a total machine gun. The only reason it doesn't sound like a total machine gun is because of the multi-sample drum library that is Perfect Drums 1.5. So there still is a little bit of randomness in there with the samples and the logic editor that they have in the plugin itself, but still, we can do a lot more to help this along. So that's what it sounds like as a machine gun. Let's have a listen to what it would sound like humanized. Total difference. Let's listen to them together. So how did I do this? How did I come upon, you know, this idea? Now, a cool thing with Perfect Drums 1.5 is you have two kick articulations, so you can simulate having two bass drums. This already goes a long way, but you can go even further, which is exactly what I'm going to show you. So the first thing I did was is I brought all the kick drum hits. I suppose I can just show you this right away. Quantize these back to everything's perfect. Yes. 
All right. So the first thing I did actually here, let's just do it like that. So the first thing obviously is I would select every other one and bring it down to the other kick articulation. After that, I'm going to select all of them and bring them down about, I don't know, one quarter of the way here because I want to use the overall humanizing uh, humanized function. And I usually just select a velocity where it looks like a human played it, but you know, a competent human being on drums. We don't want anything like that. That's just ridiculous. So we need to get it to where, you know, it's in the ballpark. And usually I find that 11 to 16 uh, velocity percent on Reaper seems to work quite well. The reason for this is because we're going to take the left-handed drum kick hits and we're going to bring them down a little bit. Now, let me explain the logic behind this. So a drummer has a dominant and a weak hand. In my case, I'm pretending that my drummer is right foot dominant, which means every right foot is going to have a slightly higher uh, velocity because he's stronger in that foot. However, I can also simulate that he's playing on a double pedal. Now, for those who don't know how this works, a double pedal basically uh, goes on one bass drum head, and then you have one pedal that's hitting directly in the center. Then you'll have the other pedal that's hitting off center a little bit. So just imagine that you have one hitting directly in the center and getting the perfect hit. Mm -mm. It's all nice and punchy. And then one directly off center is going to lose a little bit of punch. And you can simulate that doing exactly what I'm showing you right now. So what I'm doing is I'm pretending that th this is my left foot and this is my right foot. So I bring the velocity down even a little bit more on the left foot and we get a much more realistic performance. From here, I'll just create a loop, for example. If I... There we go. I'll just create a loop. Uh, make sure this is, there we go. And then I would adjust the left foot kick drum until it sounds real to me. Let's go ahead and do that now. So it's about right there. One thing I'm noticing though is that all of the dynamics are a bit low. So I'll, let's bring this up a tad bit and then let's do this again. That's actually pretty darn good in my opinion. So now let's, we can actually compare what these sound, what this sounds like. So it's, it is a night and day difference of how the you go from machine gun double bass to a human performance double bass. Night and day difference. Now this same technique can be applied for stuff that you do on the hands. So Tom rolls, let's listen to both of these and then I'll explain what's going on here. All right, so with Tom's, there's another thing that we need to keep in mind is that uh, when a drummer plays, like a really fast drummer plays quickly, most drummers will lose power if the Tom goes on for, uh, the fill goes on for a long time. So it's very often you're going to hear like snare tom one, snare tom two, crash, and then back into the blast beat. It's very common. And that's because the drummer can really keep the intensity and the power when he's doing those fills. It's very rare when you run into people like Derek Roddy and George Kalias that can do these long-winded tom fills and keep the power going. Very rare. Requires a lot of practice and endurance. So how I simulate this is this little section right here. As the last three tom hits go, I actually bring the hits down a little bit further and further, simulating that the drummer's running out of steam. He's like, ugh, getting to the end of the fill, boom. Then he's going to hit the crashes, then he's going to go back into the blast beat again. So here it is, all 127 pegged. So there's a distinct difference between the right hand and the left hand sticking. It's the same principle that I did with the right foot and the left foot. Same thing here. So that, that's pretty simple to understand the shells and how to grasp it. All you need to do is you need to visualize yourself. Is your drummer right or left handed? And then you can you need to program based on his dominant hand. Now, the real way to make your drum sound realistic, hi-hats and ride cymbal. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a very, uh, just a straightforward European blast beat with a hi-hat. Let's hear.
What do you think? I mean, uh, are we in triplets? Are we in straight time feel? What are we doing? What is the hi hat doing? Just banging away. You don't really, you don't really understand what's happening. There's no feel or flow to the song. It's because our symbols are our meter, and that's how we have to tell the listener this is the beat of the song, and this is where you should be bobbing your head. That's what a hi hat and a ride symbol do. That's what you need to do. So when I play this. Try to detect the beat and the flow of this beat, and you and you try to figure out where it is. Okay, so some of you may have realized, ah, oh, we're in triplets, triplet, 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 and then once you got it in your head, your mind created the flow, and then the hi hat started to sound normal to you. But for other people, this is just going to sound like dunk, 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 nothing's going on. So this is what we have to do with hi-hats. So we need to get rid of this, and we need to create something like this. Now, the cool thing about multi-sampled drum libraries like uh, Perfect Drums and, and uh, Easy Drummer is that there are different articulations for the hi-hat. This is incredibly important because you can program a hit on a different articulation, and it'll add even more realism in combination with the velocity editing that you would do. So you heard the unhumanized part. Let's have a listen to this and tell me if you can hear the difference. What do you think? Pretty big difference. Let's listen to the last half of that and to the next half of the... So in my opinion, a complete night and day difference. This is this is the exact same thing that you would want to do with a ride cymbal that's maybe hitting on the bell. Ding, 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 ding. It's the same exact principle, the same exact thing you'd want to do. Uh, so use the different hi-hat articulations when you have them. It will help them sound more realistic. You can do the same kind of velocity editing to this hi-hat, but you will still run into a little bit of the machine gun effect or you'll need to do more extreme velocity editing. Just go ahead and program them on different hi-hat articulations and you'll be fine. We're using three hi-hat uh, articulations, so they're all really like each other. So they'll sound like a drummer is hitting the hi-hat in different places with different parts of the stick sometimes. Total realism, it'll completely change the way your beat sounds, as you can tell with this simple drum beat. So we went from total mechanical boringness to, wow, this sounds like a real drummer actually played this. That's the power of a little bit of velocity editing. Now, if we look at the actual velocity editing that I did, a real drummer would accent uh, the bottom of the beat. This is very common when playing triplets, especially a European blast beat. He's gonna accent the bottom of the beat. So that means one, two, three, four. One and a two and, you know, stuff like that. And that's exactly what I've done here. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and and in between I just made sure all of the accents were with the open hi hat because it has the loudest uh, that I like the loudest articulation. And I even showed you I just went between two articulations and you almost didn't even notice. Almost unnoticeable, but the velocity is what is key. So that's. What you should be doing, this is what your velocity should look like. Every time you have that roller coaster in that valley, the roller coaster top should be the beat that you're trying to emphasize. Keep that in mind. So the next tip that I have for you is that drummers only have four limbs, two arms and two legs. I know this sounds like a pretty silly tip to give you, but it's very often that I will get client files from people who are not drummers that have... Uh, program things and they just have silly things going on that you know a person who doesn't know better would be like that kind of sounds funny or how is that possible we want to get away from stuff like that so also i'll show you two classic examples what i've seen a lot all right the first one being that you've got double kick rolls which are humanized right and then an opening and closing hi-hat articulation now if you think about this you're going to be like uh -huh, yeah that's kind of silly because you need that foot on the uh, hi-hat pedal to open and close the hi-hat. You can't be doing double bass at the same time. 
So it sounds cool. And the only way that you could actually do this in real life would be like Buddy Rich style, where you're playing it like a jazz drummer would, and you're muting the hi-hat manually with your hand and still hitting the snare. But see, now you're running into an impossibility with the snare and the hi-hat being hit at the same time, All right? There's always a give and take that you have to do with drum programming. If you want double kick rolls and you want a hi-hat sound like that, you're going to have to make it so that the snare hits all by itself. So these little details will go a long way. And it doesn't matter that everything here is all nicely humanized. This just doesn't make sense on top of it. Okay. The next example that I can show you. More than four symbols, uh, excuse me, more than two symbols at once. Two hands, you know. I mean, it sounds cool. When you hear that, you're just, nothing really immediately jumps out to you, but you can see we're just we're hitting too many symbols. People can't do this, so you want to avoid stuff like that, right? And the, and the reason you want to avoid stuff like that is eventually you want a real person to play your drums, right? Okay, so program real drums. It would be the same if you uh, took a guitar software and programmed all these crazy six-string diminished sweeps, and then got mad when your uh, guitar player can't play them. All right, same deal, right? You you should be writing music that eventually should be played by real musicians. Uh, here's another great example. Um, more than four pieces of the kit being played at the same time. Where is it? It's right here. Playing three toms at the same time, more than two cymbals at the same time. So these are very small details, again, that you need to pay attention to, and you need to avoid doing when you're programming drums. All right, so no more than four things at the same time. Two hands, two feet, all right? Next is, um, the next tip is that nothing hits together at the same time, ever. What I mean by that is a real person cannot hit the same point at exactly the same time, ever. There will always be the slightest difference in time. Granted, it's going to be so minuscule that our brain will interpret it as being hit at the same time, but it's not at the same time. I want to prove that to you. So I have two uh, little lines here that are exactly the same. I've just made a little bit, I made a slight change to the second one here. And I want you to uh, see if you can hear the difference. So here we go. I'll actually make a loop so we can check this out. Did you, did you notice a difference? There's a there's a big difference, all right? So with the first one here, ah, oops. With the first one here, goodness, we have everything exactly on time. Now we have a very interesting phenomenon happening here in that everything is exactly on the same time, so it's too perfect. And it almost comes out as coming out directly down the middle in a mono signal. Nothing else here is wrong. This is comp completely possible to play in real life two toms tom snare two tom everything's good same thing here but what did i do different what did i do different over here is i barely barely nudged them off time every single pair is hit not exactly together okay so i'm creating a very small micro flam a very small distinct difference with these pairs being hit all right and that is what creates almost like a stereo sound because you can hear it now. So we can hear how this sounds like mono. We almost can't hear the different panning of the different toms because everything is, is, is being played exactly at the same time. Now if we compare that to this, can can hear it clear as day. We got a floor tom, we've got a high tom, and we got a tom down the center with a snare. It's very clear because those slight, slight differences because drummers don't hit everything at the same time. It's impossible. We have to program the exact, that same, uh, exact same way. So it's a cool tip. This is actually like a really insider pro tip. A lot of people don't do this. 
they just go ahead and program it like that. I have gone in a lot of a client MIDI files and done this exact thing and it works, trust me. So that was tip number four, nothing hits at the same time. That also goes for symbols, by the way. So if we go back, let's just go back to this example, right? How can we do this, right? Let's just quantize this on the beat. Symbols and shells should not be hitting at the same time either. So what can we do about this here? We can actually use the humanize function again, take velocity away and just, just barely nudge them off time, like three or 7%. Let's just do that, right? And we can do the same thing here. We can nudge the snare maybe by, let's just say 3%, right? And then nudge the drums or the kick drum again by 7%. And let's see what this sounds like. It sounds like a very realistic drum performance and we didn't do really a lot. And there, the main thing was not drastic changes. If you, if you humanize this too much, then it would just sound like a very poor amateur player uh, recorded it. But this sounds like a very human performance. I bet you could fool quite a number of professionals with uh, programming like this. All right. All right. So let's move on ahead. Let's talk about now um, tip number five, which would be um, avoiding stuff like this, which are odd number of kick hits, odd number of uh, hits between the kick and the hands, impossible drum lines. Stuff like that. So what is an impossible drum line? Well, if you have not heard who Infant Annihilator are, it sounds something like this. So that's an impossible drum line. Don't do stuff like that. It sounds bad. I don't think I need to talk about that much further. Let's talk about the more subtle things where a person may not understand why it's not a good idea to program stuff like this. So let's listen to this. On its face, it really doesn't sound like it's wrong in some way. But as a drummer, I can tell you that fill would, if I had any hair, would make me pull my hair out because you're alternating quickly between a, a right foot and, a, and your right hand. This is actually uh, an exercise that I found in drum programming books to uh, increase balance and coordination between different limbs. It's very rarely gonna be a fill and when you see stuff like this, it's usually top of the line level jazz drummers and drum solos just showing off their chops and dexterity skills. That's really all that is. So don't program stuff like this. It's going to be very uh, unlikely that your drummer can play it anyway. And if he does try to play, it's just going to come out like a bunch of flams. It's going to sound bad. So don't do that. Here's the next one. So what's going on here? It sounds not bad, but what's the problem? The problem is right here. Five kick hits into three kick hits into three into two. This is a very hard thing for drummers to do. I mean, drummers generally really like to play in groups of two and four. That's easy. Even numbers of two and four, no problem. Two here, two here, two here, two here. They can do that. Two on the kick, two in the hands, two in the kick. You can really get some fast sounding fills by just uh, doing Joey, Jordan, Joey Jordanson style fills where it just rolls. It's like kick, kick, snare, snare, kick, kick, tom, tom. And you can really get some amazingly fast blazing stuff sounding like that. But this, this kind of stuff you want to avoid. It's very odd to play. It would be very difficult to play. And when, when you look at this, you know, you got four kick hits, fine, no big deal. But then he should do another kick hit and then one tom, three kicks, tom, three kicks. It's just very uncomfortable, very strange, and it doesn't really sound that good either. So building on that, we run into stuff like this as well. But Scott, he, this is a normal fill. Yeah, it basically is. But again, three kick hits. It's going to be very odd to play this any, any faster than at this tempo. Snare kick, 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 snare, kick, kick, kick. Because what's gonna happen is the kicks, a good drummer will alternate kicks. So it would be snare, 
right, left, right, snare, left, right, left on your feet. So it's very odd to do stuff like that for drummers. This, this would more or less be a good training exercise for foot control, not so much for fills. And this, obviously, this doesn't make sense. You go from kick, two, two snare hits, one tom, two kicks, snare, kick. It just doesn't make sense. So this is a um, just strange, odd-sounding drum line. Don't do it. Your drummer won't be able to play it. Now, this one, this is pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and listen to this. What do you think's wrong with this one here? Hmm? I mean, on, on face value, it looks fine. You know, this is these are in groups of four. Very easy to play, very common. These are all in groups of four. Nothing bad here. But when we start looking closely here, this is crash left. That's playing on the left, right? Floor tom on the right. All right, this is crash two on the right. I had. Oh, sorry, high tom on the left. This is China on the left. And this is Tom down the center. So let's actually just open up and look at this. So if I'm a drummer and I'm looking at this, I go, okay, we start with this symbol. Then we go to this Tom. And then this symbol. And then this Tom. And then this symbol and this Tom. Well, that's just not ergonomically comfortable to play. Because think about it, you go, you start the roll with your right hand because he's right hand dominant, right? He's hit this crash symbol over here, and then he's got to start the roll with his left hand on the floor time over here, so he's got to bring the hand all the way over here. And then he goes to hit that crash with the left hand up here, start the tom roll over here. This one's not so bad. A lot of people can do this. But then, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do this China symbol over here? And then, you know, so it's, your arms are always crisscrossing like that. And it's very uncomfortable and it's very uh, not friendly ergonomically. So these are things you want to avoid doing. Again, when you see the drummers doing this cross-sticking stuff, you know, like the jazz drummers during this, they're just showing off their chops. That stuff is very rarely going to be in a song. I mean, just because you saw Mike Mangini doing it on a drum solo with Dream, Dream Theater doesn't... He's not the normal drummer. He's not a normal drummer. He's, he's, he's a wizard, all right? So you want to avoid doing stuff like that. So... To cap it off, right, you need drum maps. You need to do proper velocity editing. You need to remember that drummers only have two arms and two legs. You need to remember that no two things on the drum set, uh, drum set ever hit exactly at the same time. And you need to avoid odd number kick hits in between hand hits. You want to avoid alternating between kick and hand hits at the same time also. And you want to avoid impossible drum lines, which is whatever. But you also want to take into account uh, ergonomically impossible drum lines. So those are all things you want to keep into uh, keep into account. And bonus tip, do what I just did. When in doubt, air drum it out. Open your drum program. Look at it. Pretend that's you sitting at the drum set. Uh, put the BPM of the song at like half of what you're trying to program at. And play it out. Air drum it out. If you find yourself doing this a lot or going, huh, how would he do that? Or, oh, okay, right, left, right, left, right. That's uncomfortable. Well, it's uncomfortable for you at like 50 BPM. Just imagine what the drummer trying to play it at 180 BPM would be saying. So those are things to keep in mind. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. And if you haven't already, again, link down below. You can download this MIDI file for free along with the PDF. More guidelines and tips and tricks for you to read and check out. I hope the video was helpful. Please hit like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss my future videos, and share this video with anyone who you think might need help with drum programming. All right, guys, thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.